My name is Brad Arnold. I'm the general manager of Precision Planning. I hope you guys are having a good day. How's the day gone so far? Good? Awesome. Awesome. This is a week we look forward to every year. The one week that we can take what we've done the last 12 months, package it all up in about six hours of content, and do the best job we can teaching you, transferring that knowledge. And so um, it's fantastic for all of us white shirts to finally get 12 months of bottled up energy out. Uh, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. So um, we've got two more cool things to show you today. You know, this is a crazy part of the infomercial that says, but wait, there's more. So we've got two more announcements. But before we do that, I want to share a funny story on myself. Um, every year for Christmas, you know, everybody packs up the van, takes off, and visits family, right? We went down to Atlanta. I saw my mom and dad. My brother lives down there, too. So we got to visit for about four or five days. And what's the best part about visiting family over break? It's when you pack that van and get a head back home, right? I love my family, but I like home. And, the stress of winter conference just got deferred. It didn't get killed. So uh, we wanted to get back home and get to work. And so I packed up the van on Thursday morning, got everybody loaded up, and we headed for home. We got to Nashville about, about 10. My daughter has a friend in Nashville, so she played with her, her friend for a few hours while we did some shopping and had some food. Got back in the van at the gas station and said, all right, six hours to home, I'm on a mission. No different than us when we're sitting in the cab on April 15th saying it's time to plant. There's nothing getting in my way, right? Well, sure enough, I look at my daughter, and my daughter didn't look very good. So I told my wife, uh, I probably ought to check and see if she's got a temperature. So I reach back, feel her forehead. She, you know, the door was just open, so some cold air was blowing on her. I got the answer I liked, I wanted, right? She felt pretty good by feeling her head. That's conventional wisdom. You know, to get a good measurement, you touch her forehead, at least for us guys. Moms are smarter than that. My wife looked at me and said, uh-uh, why don't you feel her side? So sure enough, I put my hand up underneath her shirt. Yeah, she might be a little bit warm. Well, get the thermometer out. Well, where's that? It's in the back of the van. <laughs> it's in my suitcase. Seven suitcases in the back of the van. The last one is my wife's in the very bottom of the van pull all the clothes out, finally find that thermometer, come around, test my daughter in the ear. Guess what the temp was? 104 degrees. Now we got a problem, right? One accurate measurement changes everything. Now I've got a decision to make. I've got to go to Walgreens. I've got to get some Motrin, some Tylenol. We've got to make sure that she gets home safe, right? It's worth making a new decision now that I've got accurate information. And that's what spurs us at Precision Planting. We use this axiom all the time, and you've been beat over the head today about measurement. And I'm sorry for that, but I'm not sorry, because measurement is what brings information to us so that we can make a better decision. And Grace Hopper is a great uh, uh, lady of data science. She actually has worked for the military, U.S. Naval Rear op, uh, Admiral, and uh, she says one accurate measurement is worth a thousand expert opinions. And that's, that's how we live around here at Precision Planning. And so our desire is that this new Gen 3 display, which no different than 2020 when it was released 10 years ago, is your source of truth. We want to outfit every piece of equipment that you guys use over time and bring truth about equipment performance. You see, when you've got truth about performance, you've made decisions about how many seeds per acre, what hybrid, what rate of starter am I going to apply? How deep am I going to plant? You've made decisions about all of those things based on your, your knowledge, based on your soils, based on history, and you want to make sure that your equipment is actually performing as you intended. And so that's our desire, is to make uh, the 2020 display your source of truth. And not just about equipment performance, but about the environment as well. And you see that today over and over again with what Smart Firmer is able to do. And so much of our R&D is, is driving forward, not just on planters, but on every pass of the field to see if we can bring you more and more truth about how uh, decisions that you've made are actually being performed and executed in the field. Okay, and so I've got one cool announcement to make as it relates to that. Again, we're not just about planters anymore. You can see that we've removed the tarp and all of a sudden we've got an air seeder uh, behind us, four row units of an air, air seeder. So we've taken what we know about downforce control 
and over the last three years spent time up in Canada, in the Dakotas, in Kansas, and trying to figure out, does downforce control matter in wheat? And so we've uh, done all kinds of research. Will and Chad and Tanner have spent tons of time trying to understand, not just being a hammer looking for a nail, but actually trying to see, does this make agronomic sense? And so today I'm excited to announce Cedar Force uh, as a product actually available for sale. No better place in the world to announce that product actually than Fargo, North Dakota. And so we've got Will Frank and uh, Troy McCown up in Fargo at our simulcast location. They're actually gonna be presenting it live. These guys have recorded their session for us here in Tremont and the other simulcast locations. So we're gonna be able to watch that the next 15 minutes. Uh, so I'm excited to announce Cedar Force. Here's Troy and Will. You've had here at Precision Planning's Winter Conference. You know, never in the history of farming have you had this much actionable data in your hands as you plant your crop. As a grower, you are able to make proactive decisions that protect the yield of your crop unlike ever before. It wasn't but 10 years ago that the 2020 seed sense was revealed to the world. The 2020 instantly gave more control of the decision making to the operator of the planting equipment. Critical information about metering and performance, depth, spacing and population were suddenly easy to understand row by row. Little did we know that, you know, just the little things like rusted chain links, hanger bearings, and hex shaft flex points could impact the performance of our planter. Downforce sensors opened our eyes to how weight distribution and soil conditions and the different types of soils, tillage practices and traffic patterns could impact depth and emergence consistency. For the last 23 years, precision planning has focused on improving the way farmers put seed in the ground by understanding and actually measuring the impact of various yield robbing problems. That understanding and measurement has improved metering quality to handle any size and shape of seed through one meter, improved the depth consistency of the row unit to handle each row in every environmental condition, and population control to place the exact population and even hybrid just as you want. Simply put, until we were able to physically measure how seed was placed into the ground, we didn't know how to improve, but now we know. We know that each and every crop that we have encountered responds positively to being placed at the optimal population for the environment. We know that every crop responds positively to consistent germination and even timely emergence. As we work with growers across the world, we're always listening to understand how we can help their farming systems. Many farmers have commented that for years, precision planning has improved the technology and the performance of their row crop planters, but they express how frustrating it is to see how close to perfect they can get with their precision planning powered planters, only to operate their air seeder like an old relic and a controlled spill. Precision planning recognizes these shortcomings and for the last three years, we've been researching the issues surrounding air seeder performance. I'm excited to introduce to you Will Frank, the air seeder project manager, who will share what we have learned and where the power of the new 2020 at Precision Planning is heading. Will? Thanks, Troy. We certainly have had a lot of fun traveling across the United States and Canada the last three years, learning about the multitude of challenges that air seeders present. Just like any new research project, we begin by shining the flashlight around the performance of the system. We find key issues that impact yield or revenue and develop solutions for them. We have certainly seen drastic differences from one location to another. Differences in cropping systems and different environmental conditions. No matter where we went, two key issues kept showing up. A lack of visibility to seed distribution across the drill and inconsistent seeding depth. Let's start with seed distribution across the drill. We took an 1895 and disconnected the secondary seeding lines at the seeding boot and blew wheat seed from the cart into individual mesh bags. The results surprised us. We measured up to 38% variation from one row to another while sitting still. Imagine what happens when you are moving or if you're on uneven ground. But unfortunately, the OEM monitor told us everything was fine. That's an air seeder with an air cart and wheat but even a CCS style seeder really struggles. Take a look at this data from a 32 row seeder planting soybeans. Even with individual metering for every seed run, the drill had a 10% variation between rows. Again, the OEM monitor told us everything was fine. Have any of you ever seeded a few thousand acres? And when cleaning up the drill for the year, 
removed the lids from your towers and found this, a dead mouse partially blocking a secondary line. The mouse clearly had more than its fair share of seed treatment. In all three of these cases, the OEM monitor told you that everything was good. All the blockage sensor indicators were green. You have to find the dead mouse for yourself or you have to rely on digging seed behind your air seeder. But for wheat, really like for all small grains, the number of seeds per foot is significantly higher than row crops. You see in this example for wheat, planted at 1.5 million seeds per acre with a row space of 7.5 inches. Even though the row is four times narrower than our corn planter, the number of seeds per foot is 10 times higher. If your wheat field is 160 acres and you dig enough seed to check 100 feet of furrow, you would find 2,105 seeds. From that 100 foot strip, you have to make a decision. Is your drill ready to plant the rest of the farm? The frightening thing is, you have only looked at 0.000009% of the seeds. Think about that for a second. That would be like creating a fertility plan for your entire farm from the results of one soil sample. You wouldn't do that with your fertility program, so why is it acceptable with your air seeder? The reality is, you can't dig enough seed enough times for it to become statistically relevant. You need help. As we started our air seeder research back in 2014, we started digging seed also, and we found a lot of stand variability. Take a look at these two rows on the left of the screen. Notice how there's 70% of the stand that's missing compared to the two rows on the right. Looking across the field now, you can tell that there isn't a perfect stand, but unfortunately, this is the normal performance of drills today. Once the crop gets to this point though, there's nothing that you can do about it. Both yield and revenue have been lost. We need to back up to planting time when the drill is actually rolling through the field and we can do something about it. What do you think? Is this air seeder doing a good job? Our data shows that an OEM air seeder can produce about 75 to 80% good downforce. This metric, which is also used on row crop planters, indicates when you have just the right amount of weight on your gauge wheels. Too little force and you plant shallow or on top of the ground. Too much force and you cause compaction and restrict root development. In our research, most of the remaining 25% of the seeds end up as shallow seeds, often lying on top of the ground. This is obviously not where you wanted to place the seed, but you can't fix what you can't measure. Here's a bird's eye view of an 1895 drill. On this drill, there are six seeding rock shafts that rotate and force row units into the ground. You can change the amount of downforce on these rock shafts by adjusting the down pressure. However, you can only choose one static setting across the entire drill. When you set your down pressure, are you considering your speed, the depth, soil type, residue, or moisture? What's the right number? What if you speed up or slow down the drill? What if it rains a quarter inch the night before? Are you sure you have the right setting? Doing some math, we quickly realized that you can't win. A downforce pressure of 1500 PSI across the drill puts an additional 50% more force in the center section. This means that you need to make a compromise between the 40% of the rows in the center section compared to the remaining 60% on the wings. One grower in Texas that we have done research with for a number of years has always set his downforce target based on his wing row performance. This means that he had to seed his crop knowing that 40% of his seeder is not performing correctly. Doesn't that make your stomach churn? Having to accept that 40% of the seeds are going to be shallow because I don't want to overcompact the other 60%. Because of this compromise, this is the result in some fields. Sections of your field where you have huge gaps because you couldn't cut through the residue and get seeds into an environment for them to germinate and create yield. Having seen this issue time and time again behind drills from Texas to Kentucky, Virginia, the Dakotas, and even into Canada, we felt like we needed to quantify this. So we decided to put in a downforce plot, which contains down pressure targets of light, medium, and heavy. We then let the crop emerge and performed gap counts. We defined a gap 
as any spot in a given row where there is no plant for at least six inches. The sprayer used in this field left really nice 120 foot long scouting blocks. We found that the average gap size was about 12 inches and the lighter setting contained 19 gaps per block compared to five gaps per block for the heavy setting. This means that 16% or 19 row feet of the light setting contained no plants. For the heavy setting, 4% or five row feet contained no plants. But what if conditions change? Should we all just stack a bunch of suitcase weights on our drill and jack up the down pressure? With today's cedar, southern Indiana-based Goebel Farms struggles to cut through wheat residue when double cropping soybeans. Their solution was to stack these massive towers of weight on their bar. But we need to be careful here. Just like corn and every other crop on the planet, if planted with too much downforce in the wrong conditions can end up with hatchet roots. Hatchet roots limit the plant's ability to uptake water and nutrients. This will certainly impact the ability to generate top yield. What we need is a better way to manage the weight that we have available on the bar. This is a challenging problem with one static setting. Seeding germination within minutes of one another. This is your goal. This was made possible by managing downforce correctly and ensuring that these seeds were planted at the same depth. So what is the right downforce number? The growers didn't know and neither did we. So to answer this question, we went back to the fields to put in more downforce plots. Plots are tough work. As a farmer myself, I always learned something, but maybe not what I had hoped for. Our first winter wheat downforce plot in South Dakota was planted in 2015. The plot was coming up great. All signs were that there was gonna be significant data there for us. There was such a big difference in how the wheat was coming out of dormancy that the local agronomist who wasn't aware of the plot location in the field was frantically calling the grower asking what had happened in his wheat crop. I was really excited to get the yield results. This is a picture of the wheat field on the Sunday before it was harvested. I remember packing my bags to get on the airplane that afternoon to be part of the harvest on Monday when I received a phone call that the combine cutting around our plot hit a rock, generated a spark, and had caught the entire field on fire. Like any good prairie fire, it only took a few minutes to burn a few thousand acres. I asked if any of the plot was left, and my heart sank when I received a text with this photo that everything was gone. But there was a silver lining. It was reported that there was a huge difference in the flame height from pass to pass. Thankfully, the only thing that was lost was the crop, and no one had been hurt but that's farming in the West. Thankfully, our 2016 plots fared far better. This picture, taken in one of our 2016 downforce plots, is a good example of our experience with air seeders. There was lots of areas where we didn't have adequate downforce to cut through residue and plant seeds at the proper depth, resulting in a weak stand. But you didn't know this at planting time. You thought you were doing a good job. Things really started to stand out when we began digging plants and investigating roots. We pulled plants from a section of the field that had too little downforce and compared them to plants where the cedar had good downforce. The difference was obvious. Take a look at the size of the wheat stems on the left of the screen. Notice how much smaller they are than those on the right. Notice how much more root mass is present on the right hand side. This added root mass allowed the plant to pull in more water and nutrients resulting in a much healthier plant. The yield results follow this trend as well. This graph shows five different downforce targets. You can see that there was a four bushel advantage to choosing the correct downforce target for your drill. But how do you know what the correct downforce target is for your air seeder without load cells on your row units to give you real-time feedback in the cab? This is the 2017 downforce plot in South Dakota. As you can see, the worst drought since 1976 had a profound impact on this stand. But interestingly enough, you can pick out how this crop was affected by different amounts of downforce. The areas with poor downforce died even before heading, while the area with good downforce had a much more even stand. Proper downforce management made these plants much more drought tolerant. The last three years of air cedar research has validated something for us 
that we've known for almost a decade on planters. Downforce control management is critical to proper stand establishment regardless of the crop. Wheat, rye, barley, canola, soybean, pulse crops, and even these tillage radishes for cover crops. You're planting a specific seed at a specific rate for a specific reason, and you want each and every seed to be placed in an environment where it can excel. Almost a decade ago, we introduced load sensor technology onto row crop planters, and we had no idea the issues that we would bring to light. Now that we have hundreds of thousands of them installed in fields, we have found how wheel traffic, tillage patterns, broken parallel arm bolts, frame weight distribution, and many other factors can influence crop performance. The same need is there on air seeders, and for the last three years, we have been testing these load sensors on air seeders across North America. Today is a groundbreaking and exciting day. We are proud to announce that Precision Planning has developed a downforce measurement and control system called Cedar Force. The load sensor, Cedar Force downforce control, and seed monitoring are all done through our brand new 2020 display and are available for sale today. Now there is a tool for the drill that you already own where you can monitor the seeding distribution to find problems like this and fix them the moment that they happen. Now you can use the new 2020 and enter a downforce target that you want to maintain. Just like on your row crop planner for the last decade, the same load sensor technology installed on your John Deere 60 or 90 series drill takes downforce readings 200 times a second and communicates those measurements to the SRMs located across your drill. The SRM compares the amount of weight on the gauge wheel to the downforce setting that you have selected in the cab. Soils, speed, moisture, residue, and even tillage practices change all day every day. Are you going to be too light or too heavy or just right? With Cedar Force, the system adjusts on the fly so that as those field conditions change, you don't have to guess. With a simple modification to the existing hydraulic system, and with components very similar to our industry-leading Delta Force system, we are able to take a 60-foot air seeder that has one fixed downforce setting today and convert it to 10 individual seeders, each adjusting to field conditions and applying just the right amount of downforce. Remember the air seeder of today only produces 75 to 80% good downforce. Our data shows that Cedar Force can improve your seeder downforce performance by 15 to 20%, resulting in good downforce 95% of the time. This means that an additional 15 to 20% of the seeds that you are planting actually get to an environment where you can get a return on your investment. The words seed mortality rate should no longer be accepted on your farm. Demand more, see more, control more with Cedar Force. Smarter every year. So we're really excited about Cedar Force. It's uh, the, our entry really into small grains. Um, we believe that there's a lot more that we can do to the air seeder. It's a tool that really hasn't been updated in technology in 30 years. And so uh, as we get the 2020 monitor on and start to shine the flashlight on other, other problems that the seeder has, we're excited about where that's gonna go in terms of being able to bring more value to small grains, uh, which gives us the ability to continue to expand um, ways that we can help you guys. So uh, the next thing I've got to announce today uh, is a new research farm. So when I started back in 2009, it was right after Winter Conference of 09 when we announced Air Force. And uh, what we decided as a leadership team is we gotta figure out a way where we can take the experience of Tremont and take it out to every dealer's hometown nine months out of the year. And so we created PTI, Planner Technology Institute. So we bought a tractor and we bought a trailer from Craftsman and they were able to figure out how to get 60 seats uh, into this trailer uh, and allow us to demonstrate all of the things that 2020 does and some of our metering solutions do. And so for the last nine years, we've taken that across the country. And I think we've reached probably in the neighborhood of 50,000 farmers have been able to participate in that process. And it's still a really valuable education tool that our dealers get value from. And we hope you guys as our customers get value from as well. But we found there's one thing that it lacks. There's one thing it lacks. And that's the ability to actually get in the field, get your boots dirty, and actually see how the technology adds value on the farm. 
And so what we've done is acquired a 200-acre farm uh, just outside of, the, out of Pontiac, 85 miles south of Chicago. And we're going to be doing on-farm research. Jason Webster, who we hired a year ago, uh, this has been his passion since he was a kid. And uh, about six, seven months ago, Jason came to us and said, I've got to build a research farm. Would you guys let me? And he started working with the town of Pontiac, and we figured out how to get 40 acres uh, under lease with the town of Pontiac, and we found some farmers around there that were willing to partner with us. And so now we've got a research farm that we're going to be able to allow all of you from across the country to come into Pontiac uh, to see the value of, of the technologies that we sell, as well as many other things uh, that we're going to do in terms of tillage studies, fertility studies, all kinds of things. And not just that, but allow you to actually drive the equipment, to actually get your hands on it. And so we're excited about that. So we've got a little video before Jason comes, but he's going to spend a little bit of time telling us uh, about what he wants to get done this year with that. Gosh, we are excited. Everything we've learned today at Winter Conference, we've got one more thing. It's uh, unbelievable that we do have one more thing to talk about, but as Brad said, we've got a new research farm that's going to really have some unique features that I think you guys are going to like. Brad mentioned that this has been something that I've been trying to get established for a long time, kind of a what-if situation. The Precision Technology Institute in on-farm research center where we can come see technology, see agronomic testing, and you to see equipment on the farm. When you think of agronomy, when you think of technology, when you think of equipment, who do you think of? Precision planting. And so we're going to take those three components, bring them to one location, Pontiac, Illinois. I'll show you the farm here in just a second. We've got 200 acres in size. We've got a little room to run with that amount of, of acres, so we're excited about that. Okay. It will be an educational show site that, that we're going to be able to use for large and small demonstrations. Our, our, envision is, our vision is that you come to visit this farm during the summer when maybe you're not as busy on your farming operation. Maybe the end of June, July, August, maybe that first week of September. And we'll show you some of the, the agronomy testing that we're doing. We'll show you some of the equipment and technology we have available for sale here at Precision Planting. Here's where the farm is at, it's in Pontiac, Pontiac, Illinois, and I-55 shoots up north of Bloomington, and that's where our farm is located. As we think of where we're standing here today in Tremont, Illinois, we're about 70 miles away, so fairly close to headquarters here. As we drive up the interstate on I-55, again, this would be north of Bloomington, Illinois, south of Chicago, about 85 miles, we're going to come to mile marker 197. Okay, and as we exit 197, right there at that green exit sign, right on the right side of it, we're going to have our 200-acre farm, 200 contiguous acres, where we're going to have a little bit of a sandbox to play in. And I, I thought now would be a great opportunity to, to kind of show you the farm and show you some of the features that, that we think are somewhat unique. Here's an overhead view of the farm, uh, some drone footage. Beautiful soils in this particular uh, location. I'm excited about some of the high yield trials we're going to be able to do on, on this farm. I think, you know, the National Corn Grower Association released their high yield winners, you know, a couple weeks ago, and 542 bushel corn uh, was reported. Boy, what the type of dirt we're going to have on this farm. I can't wait to um, maybe even have some yield contests there on, on our farm and trying to learn about agronomy. How do we push yields, but how do we push the economics of it as well. How do we, how do we learn how to, to, to get more profit? 
Here's how the map layout is. Again, 200 acres, again, all contiguous. So this is going to be really nice as we, as we position this farm. What could we do for agronomic research? Well, maybe we do what we've been really good at in the past for quite some time, those singulation spacing studies. Maybe we bring depth into it. We start looking at downforce. Those are going to be the things that, that we we're traditionally known for, and we'll have those on the farm so you can evaluate those, those agronomy plots. What else? You know, maybe starter, starter fertilizer. We've talked a lot about that over the last couple of years. Maybe we start introducing starter response by planting date and show you that relationship. Okay, we'd have those on the farm for us to evaluate. Tillage trials. We've got those tillage trials done. You can see them up on the screen. Conventional tillage, no-till, strip-till, uh, vertical tillage. How do those programs affect the starter fertilizer program or closing systems on the planter? Things like that. We'll be able to come out and evaluate it. High-speed planning, we can do high-speed planning on the farm. We'll talk about that more in just a second. We'll have additional fertility trials where we're concentrating on maybe dry broadcast applications versus banded liquid and combinations of the two. We'll have those on the farm. Okay, we're setting those up currently. This farm will be up and running in 2018. This coming year, this coming spring, we'll be out on the farm putting these plots together. We're excited about some of the newer products like Conceal, being able to look at relay products, those are exciting to us on the agronomy side. Another unique feature, and this is one of the reasons we chose this particular facility in Pontiac, is right in the middle of the farm, we've got a hotel. <laughs> so how about this? We've got a brand new Hampton Inn. This thing's got 80 brand new rooms in this hotel. It's only been up and going for a couple months now. But we did this for a reason because, you know, you guys are here in Tremont, so you're fairly close to this farm, 70 miles away. But how about all of you folks on the simulcast? You're quite a few miles away, aren't you? But we're only 85 miles from Chicago. Got some airports in Chicago. We got some airports in Peoria, Bloomington, Champaign. Now we can come in travel, okay, you know, within the country as well as internationally, and we've got a place to stay. We'll put you up, get a good night's sleep, we'll get some breakfast in the morning, and you walk out of the doors of that Hampton Inn, and guess what? You are on the PTI farm, the Precision Technology Institute. So here's some of the research that we could do on the farm. Just some examples. We're kinda, we talked a, about a few of these already. Um, I would like to add that we do have water on this farm. We've got access to water in a couple different ways. And I really do want to bring irrigation in to push some yields and study how we can bring water in. Something that I've never had a huge opportunity to do. But uh, we're, we're excited about that to push yields. Agronomic insights. Hopefully you guys have seen some of the video series uh, series we did over the, over the past growing season. This farm will give us the ability to continue doing that. We'll have all these plots right there in one location, so shooting these, these videos is going to be easy uh, for the precision planting team. One thing that's probably the most unique about this farm is the opportunity for us to introduce a sandbox. We're going to talk about sandbox agronomy. I remember as a kid, you know, I watched the role models in my life, my father and my grandfather, you know, do the farming. And I was, I was just a toddler, and I would watch them. I'd try to ride with them as much as I could to learn. But when I wasn't with them out in the field, what was I doing? I was in the backyard in this big sandbox that we had on, our, on the family farm, right? And I'm playing with my equipment, you know, thinking that I was a farmer at the time. But you know what we're going to do on this farm, this, this Precision Technology Institute farm? We're going to bring equipment in tractors, high-speed planters, and we're going to have that equipment on display so you as a farmer can come in and you can ride and drive that equipment. And this is something that I don't think farmers have had the opportunity to have in the past. You're forced as a farmer, and I, fe I feel for you and with you because I'm a farmer myself. When we go buy a piece of equipment, it's a large expenditure, and I don't know if I've ever had it on my farm if it's going to be the best tool for me. So now we're going to be able to come to the sandbox, we're going to jump in this equipment, and you're going to be able to do a ride and drive. You know, it's just like buying a pickup truck or a car. You go to your local dealership, and you say, hey, I kind of like to drive that, you know, test drive that vehicle. My local dealer at home, he'll say, you know what, don't just test drive that vehicle, keep it for the weekend, bring it back on Monday. How do you do that with farm equipment? How do you do that with a planter? That's just not possible. So I'm always wanting to compare myself to other other programs, other technologies, and if I can compare my program to maybe a new piece of equipment and see if I'm going to be able to do a better job farming, then that's something I'm interested in purchasing. But I want to try it first. And this is what we'd like you guys to be able to do on this farm. 
You know, maybe we have that gray road unit that you've seen here today. Maybe you, we have that on the farm, okay? Um, a high-speed planner, this is something that I, I think will be interesting. V-Apply HD, what if we've got products, you know, t equipment on the farm where you can look at V-Apply. We can apply liquids. You can ask your questions about how to, how to plumb and how to pump these things. But we envision that equipment's right there and you just go from equipment to equipment and test it out if, if you're interested in doing it. High-speed planting, let's think about this one for a minute. This was my first year, this past year in 2017, to do high-speed planting. We talked about it in our multi-genetic planting session. Awesome technology, but I've never been able to experience it until this year. How about when you come to the sandbox, we have a tractor and a high-speed planter right there in the sandbox. You can climb in the cab of that tractor and take off. We'll have the planter loaded with actual seed. We'll be planting. But the sandbox will be about 30, 40 acres of bare dirt all season long. And we're going to simulate planting time over and over again. You'll be able to climb up in the tractor, take off, and plant. We'll talk about performance of the planter. We'll have that 2020 right there in the cab. We'll talk about downforce. We'll speed that tractor up, up to 12 mile an hour, and we'll watch the performance. The really neat thing about this is how it all comes together. When we get out of that high-speed planter and tractor, we're going to go into research trials that we planted back in April, where we planted at 12 mile an hour. And you'll be able to dig that corn up measure spacing, spacing out there in the field and really evaluate what kind of job that high-speed planting can do. I think you're gonna like it. You see the planter up there on the screen? It's the actual planter that's behind me. This is the planter that we use this year for agronomy testing. You know, it's set up with triple V apply. It had conceal on it, it had furrow jet on it. Be nice to have that planter out in the sandbox so you can take a look at it. How did you hook that thing up? How did you plumb it? How did you wire it? It'd be right there for you to to not only see it, but you touch it, feel it, and you can actually hop in the tractor and take it through the field. Maybe there's some other things that we could do too since we've got a wide, wide open area to run. Maybe we, maybe we have some tillage out there. We'll need it on the farm anyway. Maybe, maybe you'd be interested in taking a look at that. The point is, I think we'd be open to look at all kinds of different agronomy. So to sum it up, Precision Technology Institute, you know, we do think we've got great interstate, interstate access and visibility. We're in a central location. Got the hotel right there on the farm, and uh, we're very close to some major cities, Chicago, Bloomington, Peoria, Champaign, and uh, we're excited. So how do you guys get to be a part of this? We'd love for you to come and experience PTI this coming summer, so all you need to do is talk to your premier dealer, tell them you'd like to uh, come visit, and we can get it scheduled, and we'd love to see you there. So that is Precision Technology Institute. We look forward to seeing you this summer. Thank you very much.